That's right, I went there. It's objective fact, okay? You can't argue with me, I'm a scientist. Disneyland is better than Disney World, okay? And what other way would I present this than an easily digestible, numerated, da -da -da -da, a top 10 list? Because I am a YouTuber and I cannot count higher than 10. I, I think there's one number higher than 10. I think it's a number 15, but I, I, that's, it's giving me the chills. Disneyland, Anaheim, California, Walt Disney's original Magic Kingdom. Why is it better than Walt Disney World? I'm here to tell you. And it all starts with this little number I like to call 10. <coughs> Bengal Barbecue is a restaurant at Disneyland. <coughs> what, what do you mean you need more explanation? Okay, well, Bengal Barbecue is the most delicious quick service place in any of the Disney parks and it's not even close. They got meat sticks, they got veggie sticks, they got rice, they got the jungle julep. It's not a mint julep, this is the jungle julep. All of this paired, and, and, well, I didn't even mention, shrunken Ned, and the dining area has a reference to SEA. What more do you need out of a restaurant? Okay, the Skipper Canteen is a close second, but Bengal Barbecue, just being able to walk up, either wait in a relatively short line or mobile order, takes the cake. Love Bengal Barbecue, Disney World. You gotta consider it, okay? It's a, it's a Disneyland staple, but I wouldn't be opposed to it coming to the East Coast because it's that good. It's so good it got its own entry on this list. Okay, can we move on now? Have I explained myself enough? Bengal Barbecue, amazing. The Disneyland Hotel, probably dare I say, aside from maybe Main Street USA, that rhymed, the best place to sort of feel a connection to old Disneyland at Disneyland. And we're going to talk about why old Disneyland is so important later on in this list. But for now, we'll just think about, talk about, and reminisce about the Disneyland Hotel. That sort of middle courtyard area is unmatched when it comes to sort of being transported away from the city of Anaheim and the hustle and bustle of Disneyland into a sort of almost tropical paradise with the monorail pool and Trader Sam's and Tangaroa Terrace. It's all just so wonderful. And then you go inside the Disneyland Hotel, and if you're a vintage Disney fan, this is the place for you. They have this huge map of Disneyland up on the wall with little interactive lighting elements. Here, let me to move out of the way so you can see them. Lots of really cool animations for the water and for these flat rides, the spinny rides, and oh, would you, would you get in here with Tinkerbell? Wait for it, wait for it. That's pretty cool. While it may not have a ton of space or that Grand Floridian or Polynesian charm, it definitely has that vintage classic Disneyland style charm. Which is why you don't find Paradise Pier slash Pixar Place or the Grand Californian up on this list, because they don't really have that. That's why the Disneyland Hotel is number nine. <laughs> Walt Disney World is like that professional place where all the big businessmen go and they go do big business. Like, uh, they, they go see Muppet Vision 3D. That's what very serious businessmen do when they visit Walt Disney World. Meanwhile, Disneyland is like that cool uncle. You know, it's that person who seems, you know, pretty professional on the outside, but once you get to know him, you'll see the quirks start to come out. He's a bit interesting. He's different than everyone else. He's got weird half-red, half-white light bulbs. He's got a strange test wall in the back of Main Street USA that nobody really talks about with a bunch of different kinds of bricks for some reason. Disneyland is unique. It's got a gift shop with a bank vault in it because it used to be a real operating bank. There's a strange little archway in New Orleans Square in front of the Haunted Mansion that nobody really knows what it's there for. Definitely not tied to any secret story of a secret pirate captain whom I am intimately familiar with. No, no, no. That's just an archway. Don't worry about it. moving on. They got this g g god dang Matterhorn tree. They got this train station that plays clicks if you know you know. They got, what, what else? They got this chimney that disguises Big Thunder Mountain if you're standing in Fantasyland. All right, Disneyland has it all. A bunch of weird little quirks and I love it. <laughs> You know, Walt Disney World has a couple of things that Disneyland doesn't have, okay? That's, that's fine. But Disneyland has one main thing that Walt Disney World doesn't have, and that's a railroad. That's right, I went there, everyone. We can actually get on a train and go around Disneyland. You can't really do that at Magic Kingdom, can you, Mr. Tronathan? No. No, you cannot. But there is one thing, even, even if the Walt Disney World Railroad were open and operating, it still doesn't have the Grand Canyon and Primeval World dioramas. This is quintessential Disneyland. See, for you Floridians out there, the Disneyland Railroad has a Tomorrowland station, and after passing through Tomorrowland on the way back to Main Street USA, you are treated to a retired scene 
from the 1964 World's Fair. And along the way, you also get a nice little Grand Canyon diorama with the loudest thunder sound effect you have ever heard in your entire life. No joke, it is absolutely insanely loud. That didn't do it justice at all. It's absolutely ear-splitting when you're actually on the railroad. And then we are treated, as mentioned before, to a scene from the 1964 World's Fair with remnants left over from Ford's Magic Skyway, the only World's Fair attraction that didn't make its way back to a Disney park. Carousel of Progress, Small World, and Lincoln all did. This one, kind of, in a piece. Just one scene. And the T-Rex versus Stegosaurus battle at the very end of the scene gets me every time with that rolling lava effect. Even though these dinosaurs didn't exist for within like a million years of each other. Check that, it's around 85 million years of each other, but who's counting? These time is flying by these days. It's like getting a free extra little dark ride with your railroad experience, and I love that. And it's not at Disney World. Now I will be the first to admit that I love love the Skyliner and the monorail and sometimes yes even the buses at Walt Disney World but that uh, those are all there to help make park hopping easier if you want to go from Magic Kingdom to Epcot you take the monorail Epcot to Hollywood Studios the Skyliner Hollywood Studios to Animal Kingdom you gotta take a bus park hopping takes a bit longer and is a bit more complicated at Walt Disney World meanwhile at Disneyland if you want to park hop my friend you just have to wait for the appropriate time obviously, and then just walk across the street. Walk across the Esplanade to California Adventure or Disneyland. It's so simple, it's so easy, it's so quick. Park hopping is a dream at Disneyland. Okay, yeah, your own two feet may not be as flashy as a Mark VI monorail or a gondola carrying you through the sky, but it's quicker and it's a lot, lot easier. Although, if Disney were willing to build a second Skyliner that connected Disneyland to California Adventure, I wouldn't be complaining. Or you could just bring the Skyway back. That's that's gonna be up to you, Imagineering, though. I'll let you handle this one. Say what you will, but ease of navigation is very, very important. Disneyland and Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Hollywood Studios, DCA, Animal Kingdom, they're all really sort of simple to navigate, but there are a few hiccups at Walt Disney World that aren't as apparent or present as they are at Disneyland. Mainly the one that, just right off the top of my head, the one that I think of every time, is the dead end you arrive at when you get to the end of Frontierland at Walt Disney World. It's sort of the same thing with Pooh Corner at Disneyland, but that's so, that's the only one I could think of in California. Disney World, you get to the dinosaur, and it's a dead end, you have to turn right back around, there's no way to loop around. Same thing with the Tower of Terror, you get to the end of Sunset Boulevard, you have to turn around and walk all the way back down Sunset Boulevard when you're done with Tower of Terror. It's not very efficient, and I think they should just make every park be, you should be able to loop around it as much as you want without having to just completely turn around and walk the other direction. Oh, this is a green screen. Okay, this is the only video I have of me interacting with a character, so just go with me on this. Chewbacca! Bright suns! Bright. Fancy running into Rock you here. Rockworlder? Mm. Uh, Rock I'm new. Uh, oh, first time on Batuu? First time. Mm. Oh, jeez, okay. Uh, so uh, uh, here's the deal. When you go to Olga's Cantina today, uh, right, right. would you say you would be the first to order? Or would you uh, be uh, known as irresistible? The answer to that, of course, being irresistible. Character interactions are some of the most important things that guests can experience at the Disney parks. And I think Disneyland absolutely schools Walt Disney World when it comes to these characters because you don't have to wait in the queue. You don't have to go to Princess Fairy Tale Hall or wait in the Star Wars Launch Bay to meet a character. You can just stumble upon them as you wander through Fantasyland. Not so much Tomorrowland, mostly Fantasyland, but also Galaxy's Edge sometimes. And you know, even Pixar Pier has the odd character sighting here and there. Yes, there are some cues that you do have to hop in at Disneyland to meet characters, but for the most part, I'd say like 70%, it's just random happenstance, spur of the moment, running into Mary Poppins, running into Alice and the Mad Hatter. It's amazing. It's quintessential Disneyland. I think if they took those characters away and put them behind a queue that you had to wait in, people would be very upset. Well, Disney World, I think, especially during the pandemic and sort of, you know, during the slow reopening process, excelled at this. They had characters out where you could just wander around and meet characters that were up, you know, beyond your reach, but you could still say hi, have a quick chat, and then be on your way. Disneyland's character experience is amazing. And I think the spot that this really stands out at is Main Street USA, where people, children mostly, can walk around if the characters want them to, just sort of hanging out 
walking around, taking a stroll around the, 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 not the hub, Town Square. It's called Town Square with Mickey and friends. It's amazing. I'll never forget, I was chilling just in Fantasyland, you know, underneath the castle when Gaston came through, and he, he, there was nobody following him, there was no one around, so he just hung out in this little chamber underneath the castle, just kind of talking about, you know, Belle and the Beast and uh, what attraction to do next. And I talked with just me and Gaston alone, Nobody seemed to care, like guests were walking by, like looking at him, registering that this is Gaston, and then just continuing on their way for probably 20 minutes. Just a nice conversation with one of the greatest Disney villains I've ever met. And I don't have it on video because it was just a genuine fun experience, just something that happens to you at Disneyland. You can't really capture that, you can't predict it happening. <laughs> Walt Disney World has Liberty Square, which is a representation of America around the 17-ish years during the American Revolutionary Era of American history. Uh, they sell turkey legs. Disneyland, on the other hand, my friends, let me tell you, has New Orleans Square, the only New Orleans-themed land in any Disney park in the world. And let me tell you, friends, it is chock full of experiences, attractions, restaurants, shops, and yes, even Lafitte references. There's an anchor right there that has his name in front of it. It's Lafitte's anchor. Is it actually Lafitte's anchor? Probably not, but it could be. And that's what matters. I mean, I, I mean, what more of an explanation do we need here, people? Okay, it's got Cafe Orleans with the delicious Monte Cristos. It's got the Blue Bayou with the bottomless mint juleps. It's got Pirates of the Caribbean, the best boat ride besides the Avengers one. And, of course, I can't, cannot, will not, should not, shall not leave out the Haunted Mansion. The best attraction at any Disney park, besides, of course, living with the land. But that's a Disney World that Disney World isn't as good. I also mentioned that Bengal Barbecue has Shrunken Ned. Well, New Orleans Square has his uncle or brother, nephew, cousin, Fortune Red. Because their names rhyme, they have to be related. He gives you a special card that you can get for free through the Disneyland Play app. It gives you your fortune. Here we go, here's mine. <clears throat> Every pirate seeks treasure and sails wary of battle. But worry not, matey. Ye won't find yourself in a skirmish. Thar be a fun night in store, a sight ye won't soon forget. But not in five lifetimes, flowers be blooming in the sky. This is a fortune that I got for free from Fortune Red. And um, it says, uh, you won't find yourself in a skirmish, but these two videos have definitely, definitely put me in the middle of a skirmish. Do you get it? I'm doing the whole two video, the, the, the pros and cons of both Disney World and Disney. Do you understand? Is that making sense? Is that connecting? I, I hope it is. I think out of all the lands at both Disneyland and Walt Disney World, New Orleans Square is the most thematically complete. Besides, you know, maybe Adventureland. Adventureland is really good too. And when you can get lost in a land in the afternoon or late evening, just wandering around the back streets of New Orleans Square, looking at all the shops, seeing all of the attractions going by, the Mark Twain and the Columbia, and just listening to the jazz, enjoying the live entertainment, that is what Disneyland is about. That is what Disney is about, and that is why it is the best land, and it's why it's number three on the list. Any questions? Okay, now we can get into rides and what Disneyland does better than Walt Disney World. I know that's what everybody compares. That's what the main attraction is at the Disney parks, right? The attractions. We got Pirates of the Caribbean, okay? I don't even want to talk about how much more Pirates of the Caribbean has to offer at Disneyland than it does at Walt Disney World. The bayou scene, two drops, a better cave scene, a more complete ending with going back up the waterfall. It's all so amazing. The Explosivo Room, everything in Pirates is better at Disneyland. And if you've never been, I highly recommend it because it's like a spiritual experience having only gone on the Disney World version of Pirates for my much of my early life. The Disneyland Pirates is superior. What else? Autopia. Autopia versus the Tomorrowland Speedway. Autopia is much longer. You go off-roading and the queue is a bit more fun rather than just sort of leaning on some metal railings you go through this little you can watch retro future disney cartoons up on a big screen you go through a little rotunda that sort of reminds me of test track it's amazing autopia i believe is better than the tomorrowland speedway and of course space mountain walt disney worlds has the music i think the music aspect of the queue of walt disney world space mountain is superior all right the star tunnel music is unmatched but the ride experience, the actual coaster experience when you get on board your rocket is miles and away better at Disneyland. Miles and away? Is that a, is that a real thing? It's miles away. 
better than Disney World. It's smooth. It's not a copy of the Matterhorn. It doesn't break your neck and spine. And the music, the music made by that guy who did Werewolf by Night is absolutely spectacular. It's so good even that they brought it over to Walt Disney World. Just little motifs here and there from the Disneyland Space Mountain because he absolutely crushed it at Anaheim. Then you have rides that you can kind of compare like Guardians of the Galaxy and Tower of Terror. But I, I do think while they are both drop tower rides, they're fundamentally different in tone and ride experience experience. But then of course you cannot, absolutely under no circumstances, leave out the Fantasyland Dark Rides. Magic Kingdom used to have these before they sort of got rid of them all, except for Peter Pan, and replaced it with New Fantasyland, which is fine. I like New Fantasyland, but the Fantasyland Dark Rides, Snow White, Peter Pan, Pinocchio, Alice in Wonderland, Mr. Toad, especially Mr. Toad, ha <laughs> ha, we have Mr. Toad still! Are amazing. Disneyland has the rides, my friend, let me tell you. But that's not the main number one reason why Disneyland is superior to Walt Disney World. There is one special thing that you can't really see, you can't really quantify or measure. It's more of a feeling, sort of a vibe that you get at Disneyland, which is why it is number one. Well, it came about when my daughters were very young and I, Saturday was always uh, daddy's day with the two daughters. So we'd start out and try to go someplace with, you know, different things. And I would take them to the merry ground and I took them different places. And as I'd sit there while they, uh, they rode the merry ground, did all these things, sit on a bench, you know, eating peanuts, I felt that there should be something built, some kind of a, an amusement enterprise built where that the parents and the children could uh, have fun together. So that's how Disneyland started. Well, it took many years. It was a uh, whole period of maybe 15 years developing. The, uh, I started with many ideas, threw them away, started all over again, and eventually it evolved into what you see today as Disneyland. But it all started from a daddy with two daughters wondering where he could take them, where he could have a little fun with them too. <laughs> Disneyland is very much all about Walt Disney and what he built. That feeling very much permeates every single corner, nook, and cranny of Disneyland Park, and it even makes its way sometimes into DCA, believe it or not. It's not really something I can explain super in detail, super well, explain to you exactly what that feeling is like, but when you get to Disneyland, you know. Especially when you ride those opening day rides that Walt had a hand in, like Storybook Land, the Mark Twain, the Carousel, the railroad specifically. The railroad, Walt Disney built all of Disneyland specifically just so he could have a bigger train than the one that was in his backyard. He just wanted a train to ride around. That's, that's why Disneyland's there, essentially. And it doesn't matter through all these years, through the Paul Pressler era, through Michael Eisner, through Bob Chapek, somehow all of that has survived to the present day. While Walt Disney World may be the brains in some aspects of the Disney parks as a whole, Disneyland is very much still to this day the heart and soul of what makes Disney Disney. I don't care about how many parks there are. I don't care about how big the castle is. It is what this park feels like to be in. And Disneyland Park in Anaheim is where you want to be if you want to see how Walt changed the landscape of entertainment. Like, forever. Most theme parks or amusement parks are sort of direct answers to Disneyland, except for maybe Knott's Berry Farm. Okay, that was first. Respect where respect is due. So is Disneyland or Walt Disney World the superior vacation or just getaway destination? I'm gonna leave that up to you, because based on the Twitter replies, people are pretty split. I like them both for different reasons though, which is why I did the, the whole two videos thing. See, that's what I, that was my plan. That was the grand plan the end of the day was to do two videos talking about what I liked about Disneyland and Disney World. Me personally, if I really had to decide, if I had to, if I were not a, a fence sitter like I am right now and I was a gun to my head forced to choose, I would probably say Disneyland. But Epcot is just so dang good, man. I love Epcot. So it, uh, like I said, I'm pretty split down the middle. I like them both for different reasons. I think they both excel at different things. But Disneyland, man, you just you just can't beat Walt Disney's original Magic Kingdom. Let me know down in the comments. What is your reasoning? What park, what resort do you like more? And uh, I think that's the end. That wraps it up. Two videos in one week. Wasn't that fun? I'm going to go ahead and go to the end card now. I'll see you over there. It's where the end card is. So go ahead and look that way. I'll, uh, I'll see you there. I got to plug all my stuff before I leave. Is this, is this it? Are we good? Is it blurred? Okay, cool. End card time.
Hello, everybody, and thank you for watching part two of my Is Disney World or Disneyland Better two-part series. I, I, I hope I didn't hurt too many feelings with, like, the lead-up to this video. I love them both. That's, that's the moral. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button. And if you're new around here because that tweet absolutely blew up, hit the subscribe button. I promise I'm not always leading people on. I mean, I do it sometimes, but no, this, this was one of the rare times where I, 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 I may have gone overboard. A massive thank you to all of my supporters over at Patreon.com. They got access to the Walt Disney World version of this video, uh, like, way earlier in the week. So thank you to them. They help keep this channel going. Even just $1 a month will get you access to most of the perks. So don't sleep on that, okay? Head to the description down below. And like I said, it just should be one of those links there. $1 a month. I highly, highly appreciate all of you Patreon supporters out there. Also, be sure to check out the Foolish Mortals podcast. I co-host that with my good friend Disney Dan almost every Friday around 1-ish to 3-ish, whatever time zone he happens to be in and I happen to be in. At the same time, we talk about the Haunted Mansion, the Disney parks, and it's a whole lot of fun. It's over at his Twitch channel, The Submarine Canteen. It will also be linked in the description down below. And I believe that's it. Besides, also, follow me on all of my other social medias. I'm at Offhand Disney on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And I believe... I will be seeing you all in the next video. Not quite sure what it's going to be yet, but maybe we'll do like historical inaccuracies at the Disney Park or historical accuracies, something like that. Something history related, I think. Thank you all so much for watching. Goodbye.